Viewers of Entrepreneurship TV, welcome to today's program. In today's program, we have invited again Dr. Kudam Paose. Kudam Paose, she is a entrepreneur based in South Africa. She heads FESO Africa. FESO Africa has got branches in South Africa and Zimbabwe, and they've got agents all over the world. We have decided to call her to come onto the platform to discuss about hair loss. For those that may not know about Kuda, Kuda has already established herself as an authority when it comes to hair. Kuda, welcome to the program. Thank you. Mm. Kuda, it be has, Kuda, it has been some time ever since you were on the program. First things first, we want to be grateful to FESO Africa for affording us this opportunity to talk to you. It is always a pleasure talking to you. Now, Kuda, we want to focus on hair loss but before we can talk about hair loss we want to find out how has been business in terms of FESO africa south africa and zimbabwe and your agencies um it, it's very interesting is the word uh because with everything that is going on around the world not only the fact that we are on lockdown but also on cash flow uh on people people don't have cash flow so Unfortunately, some people think that hair is not a, a necessity. So it tends to take a backseat. So, but to be honest, um, I need to be grateful. We have, we have suffered the knock. We feel it, but it has not been that bad. We are still in the business. So it's bad, but it's not bad. We could do more. But business has been okay. Hmm. Thank you very much, Kuda. Now, without obviously taking away time from the subject matter to do with hair loss, I want you to go further and explain in terms of the lockdown. How has the lockdown affected your business? Any lessons that you have learned that you may want to share with people? Yes. Um, because of the lockdown, we have learned, we have had to learn to deal with clients uh, online. Unfortunately, I'm still learning on how to make money online because um, it's an information age, but how do you make yourself relevant online and how do you make your client pay you online? So we're very grateful that we actually do have a product and this product has been at least our cash, cash cow because most of the time we, use, we, we would expect clients to come in and then we do one-on-one -on -one with clients. But you know, people, some people are scared. Some people have got underlining issues. And everybody wants to be safe. So you find that um, they don't want to come into uh, clinics or hair salons. And I totally, totally I understand and I do agree with them. Uh, thank God for us. We do not have like a salon set up. Ours is individual cabin. Um, so we do have some clients who are aware of that. So we do have uh, distancing within our space, mainly because um, we were being sensitive on how people are in terms of hair loss. Because our primarily business here in South Africa is on hair loss. So we had made the environment conducive for somebody who, to be comfortable with their head being out in the open, not with so many people, but just with the person who is working on them. So we had individual cabins for our clients, but they are coming, but it's not that much. So the business has just been on sales. Well, thank you very much for the background you've given us in terms of how your business has been doing and some of the lessons that people and yourself have learned when it comes to business during the lockdown. Kuda, we now need to get on to the critical subject matter to do with hair loss. A lot yes. of people have experienced the challenges to do with the hair loss. Now, yes. I would want you to explain to us because what has happened now, it's not disputable that you've become an authority when it comes to hair. So we want to find out from you what is hair loss. And maybe if you can also take this opportunity to explain to us something that I've come across, which is called alopecia. I don't know if I've uh, correctly <laughs> said the right name, but tell us about Helos as well as alopecia. 
Well, allo- you're just like talking about uh, when you talk about alopecia and then uh, you talk about hair loss, you're talking about the same thing. So alopecia is the medical term for hair loss. So when somebody is now talking um, on a medical term, that's when they talk about alopecia. But generally for the layman's uh, language, it will be, you know, hair loss. But because under also, under hair loss, there are several types of hair loss that are there. But they all come under the name alopecia. So it will be shepherd so-and-so alopecia. Kuda so-and-so alopecia. Mm. Thank you very much for that, Kuda. Before we can get to discuss the types, what causes hair loss? Well, hair loss um, is caused by so many things. Um, there is um, autoimmune, which means that we don't really know the main cause of it. It's also caused by diseases. It's caused by genes, um, you know, and it's caused by hormones. And it's also the, the bulk, especially in black people, it's uh, caused by ourselves. It's caused by chemicals. It's how you take care of your hair, what you do to your hair, what you apply to your hair. So it could be medication, some people that have got chemo that or lupus, all that is part of, all this contributes to hair loss. Even stress, you know, uh, like now a lot of people have lost jobs. So you'll find that hair loss could actually be part of that. Kuda, thank you very much. We're just going to go for a very short break. To our viewers who are watching all over the world, we're talking to Kuda. Kuda is an authority when it comes to hair. We're discussing about hair loss. I know a number of people are watching this show, especially women. But not only that, we also have got men that tend to suffer from hair loss. We're just going to go for a very, back, uh, for a very short uh, break. We'll be back very soon. How to detangle and how to undo your twist. This is double strand twist. Um, it has been like this for almost six weeks. So, as you can see, the hair is all matted. This is natural hair. And how then can one untwist this and avoid breakages? So, the first thing that you do is your water. This is just ordinary water. To make sure your hair is all wet. And then I, I advise you section it the same way that I've sectioned it. And then you start to untwist on the, you know, when you twist, you go to the one direction and then you untwist and then you separate the twist. And then as you separate, you come down here and you start separating the hair from the root coming up slowly, little by little and pulling it as you do this see I did not break any hair you go to the next one so to avoid hair being in your space you can make big twists chunks then you go back to the wet one unravel it to the other side separate it like that and then start separating your hair slowly this way you are taking away the knots without actually breaking your hair and as you can see no breakage do not use a comb I know most people love to use the comb because every time that you are using the comb you break your hair and this helps retain your hair because remember this is the weakest part of your hair so it's important just to finger comb your hair just like that and that way you save your hair you separate that way and voila no breakages to our viewers all over the world, we're still talking to Kudam Pawosi. Kudam Pawosi is an entrepreneur. 
but most importantly for today, she's an authority when it comes to issues to do with hair. We're discussing about hair loss. Kuda, welcome back. Thank you. Kuda, earlier on, we have talked about hair loss. We have talked about Feso Africa. Now, we would want to find out from you how many types of hair loss do we have? Um, you know, the, 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 the research says that there's over 22 types uh, of hair loss, even though some of them are more, and in most cases, when somebody starts experiencing hair loss, they experience more than one or two, but there's over 22 types of hair loss. I know 22 is a big number for one to comprehend, but would you briefly maybe talk to us in terms of the main ones? Well, um, let's talk about traction alopecia. So traction alopecia is mainly uh, caused by what we do to our hair. So I'm talking about your braids or wearing of wigs, um, uh, pulling, you know, like some people just wear their hair and they pull, you know, put it in a ponytail, even if you're not braiding, but you're always putting your hair in a ponytail. So you find that either your, your, you know, your hair is pulled back, so that pulls your hairline, or even here where you're always tying, that will cause traction. So anything that will put stress into your hair, will break it so that's uh that's one type of hair loss and then stress related uh loss you find that under or maybe some people call it shock so you might have lost a loved one or you are stressed and suddenly your hair starts falling off that's another type and then uh you you've got an, another one that is called um frontal fibrosis alopecia, it's FFA. Um, this is caused by hormonal. And it's found in so many women. Um, and it's primarily not, not there's not really um, a, a cause that has been actually found for it. But, um, it's, but because it's found in a certain group of women, though, yes, you find uh, here in the younger women having it, but most of them, they are of older age. So you find that it's, so we could just then say maybe it's hormonal. And then um, you've got the ones that are caused by, let's talk about, um, you know, medication. And then there is also the ones that are caused by chemicals. You know, uh, the relaxers that you put into your hair, they cause uh, fibroids. And um, as they cause fibroids, it changes your hormonal within yourself. Or even just to, you burn your scalp with the relaxers. All these things, they cause um, hair loss. Kuda, thank you very much. I believe that a lot of people who are watching the show at the moment are benefiting from what we're discussing. Now, Kuda, let's move on to the issue to do with age. You touched on it a bit earlier on. How does age contribute towards hair loss? Well, you know, as you age, uh, especially for women and mainly those that are reaching menopause, um, some of the nutrients are depreciating, you know and then they're depleting within your body. So as a result, um, your body is, uh, you know, our bodies are made in such a way that they feed on life-giving organs, isn't it? So here it tends to be one of the last ones, and nails, and then you go to your skin. So you find that um, the older women, uh, the older the women become, the more testosterone comes in and you now have DHT, it's, then you start losing hair. So usually they say from 30 years going up, your, your hair starts thinning. And that's because of the hormonal depreciating of the nutrients in, in your body as you get older. But you can actually avoid these things by taking uh, vitamins, 
and getting yourself um, on iron and all those. But it all depends on what exactly is your issue. But you still find that some type of uh, the FAA, FFA um, alopecia, you find that you, in other women, like that are younger, but that's very rare. But the bigger ones, are, the number, the bigger number is on women that are of menopause. Thank you very much for that, uh, Kuda. We're just going to go an, again for another quick short break. Uh, when we come back this time, we're going to talk about the races, the seasons, the gender, and what are some of the remedies that people can take to make sure that they do not suffer from hair loss. To our viewers all over the world, we're just going to go for a short break. Please stay tuned. We're going to be back very soon. viewers welcome back we're talking to kuda kuda is an authority when it comes to hair we decided to talk about hair loss because we've discovered a lot of people are actually affected when it comes to the issue to do with hair loss kuda welcome back thank you mm. kuda earlier on we've touched on various issues to do with what causes hair loss uh, what are the edgy uh, groups that are normally affected with the hair loss now we want to focus on the issue to do with the gender. Does uh, hair loss have got anything to do with gender? No, it's just a different type of uh, hair loss because there's male type balding. So you find that, and you find that including you, yes. <laughs> but male type balding, it affects more on white, white people. I don't know why. But you find that a lot of young guys that are white, they lose hair. It's happening also, I think, because of what people are now eating, even in the black guys that are younger. But I'm talking about from 18, you find some, some white guys, they are losing their hair. So they start having um, hair that's balding. So it's not just on women. Yes, but for women, the, the main cause is really um like i said hormonal if you are now getting older and for the black ones it's what we do to the hair it's we are causing damage to our own hair and uh as a result it's resulting to a lot of women losing their hair so it's not it's not this male type balding and this female type balding so it covers everyone so it's not just the, it's not gender sensitive. <laughs> so it goes to everyone. Everyone suffers. Mm. It's just that you guys, you hide it better, like yourself. You, you, you know, you, you can get away with murder. But whereas for me, I now have to do a lot of things to cover up my, you know, my pain, mm. my hair loss. Mm. Thank you very much for that, Kuda. You seem to have uh, preempted my next question when you spoke about how boldness affects uh, 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 different races when it comes to uh, white or black. But my next question, without focusing on gender, mm -hmm. how does race come to the play when it comes to hair loss across women and men? Mm, what do you mean? I want to be able to understand your question. Okay, what I wanted to find out is uh, when it comes to hair loss, do we have certain races being affected by hair loss more than other races? Well, I think white guys are affected more, more than the black guys. For some reason, I don't know why. Or maybe a lot of guys, uh, like yourself, you realize you're now balding, 
So you just start uh, cutting your hair all the way down. So as a result, you don't pay attention to it. Whereas for white guys, their hair grows faster than the black guys and their hairstyles are different from the hair, from the black guys. So maybe they, it's now, maybe their situation is more visible because of how they style their hair. And then you find that um, on, on black women, it's more um, of traction alopecia. This is because of what we are doing to the hair and also chemical alopecia. So you find we are messing up our hair more than the white uh, ladies. They are there, but most of the white ladies that are now suffering on hair loss, it's either they are on an advanced age or they have um, a medical condition that is an underlying issue and that they can pin to for their hair loss. But most of um, the younger women that are affected mainly, it's, it's, it's blacks. And because one, we probably don't know about it and we cover it up and we don't talk about it, which is why it's good to have these conversations all over the world. Thank you very much. We are all learning today. Now I would want to find out from you, when you were talking about hair loss, does uh, seasons or times of the year have got anything to do with hair loss? Well, um, we, I, I would want to say um, climate change does has something to do with hair loss. So if you don't understand what your hair type is and uh, what is good for your hair, you will experience uh, hair loss mainly in winter. So in winter, um, hair loss is contributed by two factors. One, the climate, because if I don't know what is good for my hair, I will apply the wrong stuff. And because I'm applying the wrong stuff, you find that my hair is undernourished, it's not uh, hydrated well, and it starts breaking. Or the other thing is, because everyone talks about uh, protective hairstyles, so mainly the people that I'm talking about is on the black community. So in winter, people start talking about uh, protective hairstyles. And because of that, so, so many people will go around with braids for a very long time, or they do a weave for a very long time. Ideally, you're supposed to be, to be doing it maximum six weeks. That's on the maximum. But the bulk of the people, they stay with the braids two, three, four months because it's winter. And they're trying to say they are protecting their hair. And you find that that person, when now they remove their hair, the hair has been knotted and it has dried up, it's got knots and it tends to break. So you, a lot of hair is also lost in winter mainly because of that so i would say yes it's kind of like seasonal because when people do get into winter they think oh okay uh let me put too much oils in winter but too much oil actually dries up your your hair so instead your hair probably needs moisturizer because it needs a lot of water because the atmosphere is dry so without you knowing what your hair really needs or what your hair type is, you either put the wrong stuff in winter mainly. Because summer, summer is, 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 is good for your hair because it's, you secrete more oils yourself, whether you like it or not, because it's hot. And so in some areas, the humidity is, is a lot. So your hair gets so much from within yourself. Whereas in summer, they don't. I mean, in winter, they don't. Thank you very much, uh, Kuda. Uh, what I may now need to know from you, which a lot of viewers have been waiting for, you being a hair authority, let me keep on emphasizing that. Uh, <laughs> you're, setting me up, you're setting me up. I'm not, I'm not that super authority. No, I'm learning every day. I'm still learning. Yes, but... Uh, At least I do have some knowledge. I, I live here, so <laughs> I'm bound to have... Uh, a little bit more than others. Yes. Thank, uh, thanks for that, Kuda. Now, what I was going to focus on now, which I would want you to address, is the issue to do with the remedies 
We have talked about everything to do with hair loss. What would be your recommendations when it comes to remedies to do with hair loss? You know, um, what, I, what I would want to say is, thank you, Shepard, for giving us this opportunity to even talk about hair loss. You know, like in the last three weeks, I have been talking about hair loss. And even on social media, for those that are following me, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing what I know about hair loss. And anyone who knows more, they are welcome to also come into the play and let us educate ourselves about hair loss. What I can say about hair loss is that it's not uh, a permanent issue if you address it earlier. So the moment you see you are losing your hair, one way or the other, don't come up with a remedy yourself. Because any detection of a certain type of your hair loss will help you. So I would urge people, don't just put a wig, don't just go shave your hair and say, oh no, because maybe, don't come up with an excuse or a reason unless you go to somebody who is professionally trained. I mean, dermatologists can... Um, can tell you what's your hair type. They can help you diagnose the correct type of hair loss that you have. Trichologists can help you uh, identify the type of hair loss. And once that has been identified, then you can start coming up with remedies. Because the other issue is people um, would have an FFA uh, alopecia, you know, the type of, of alopecia, they would probably run to remedies for somebody who's got traction alopecia. So you find somebody who has got traction, the results come, come up very quickly. Whereas on the other side, maybe she has been like that for 10 years and they expect results within a week or within a month or two months. That, that would be being unfair to yourself and the people that are actually trying to help you. So what I would say is the, the remedies are there. And also, if you go and seek counsel of what your issues are, you are then told how, what your problem is, what can be done, and at least the approximate time of recovery. But I'm saying, if we can start talking about these hair loss, don't cover them, expose them. I know it's hard to expose your loss, I mean your hair loss, because it's almost like it's a defect. But and I, I do understand it is some kind of defect. A lot of people lose uh, confidence. I do understand. And the other thing that I would want to urge is the people that are hair practitioners, people that are in the hair industry. When you identify that your client is losing hair, don't try and cover it up. Because I do understand you might be scared that this client is now going to shout at me because they are now going to think it's me. But try and advise your client to go and seek counsel before the issue has gone overboard. Well, thank you very much. Uh, a lot of viewers the world over have actually benefited from our discussion. It only leaves me to give you this last opportunity to hear your final advice, your last words, not just on hair loss, but hair in general. What do you have to share with us? Um, Shepard, we all have hair, but it's all different. And just because something has worked for me does not necessarily mean that it will work for you. And hair loss, you need to understand that there are different types of hair loss. Some of it might appear to look the same but you need to be able to distinguish the two. And if you can't distinguish the two, seek help. I mean, they can follow us um, or ask me personally. I can refer you to people that are in your area that I know, or we can assist you. For those that we can assist, we'll assist you. And um, yes, I'm gonna shout about FESO. It has helped a lot of people. It is working and chances are if it has not worked for you, maybe because you don't understand your hair type, your hair loss type. 
So don't just use fear so and put it away, assuming it's not working. Get back to us if it hasn't worked for you. Then we can walk through the journey. It's a journey. It's not an overnight uh, remedy. So people need to be patient. Once you have lost your hair, you need to be patient. Seek advice early and you will be assisted. To our viewers all over the world, we have been talking to Kuda and authority when it comes to hair. May you continue to subscribe to our channel. What we always do is we talk to various entrepreneurs. They share with us their entrepreneurship journeys. We thought, why can't we pick on a topical sensitive issue to do with hair loss? We don't want entrepreneurs who have lost confidence because they have not taken care of their hair. So may you continue to subscribe and watch out for our future entrepreneurship shows. Kuda, thank you very much for affording us this opportunity. May I also take this opportunity to uh, express our gratitude to FESO Africa for the support that they continue to do uh, when it comes to entrepreneurship uh, couch. Thank you very much for your time, Kuda. Thank you, Shepard.